Another day of high drama on Capitol Hill as Republicans voted to advance and battled Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh out of the committee into the full Senate, but then got a major shock from within their own ranks. Two Republican senators announced they will likely not vote to confirm Kavanaugh unless the FBI opens its background investigation of Kavanaugh. GOP leaders faced with the prospect of losing their nominee then agreed to allow for a one-week limited background investigation. Twists and turns, yes. no shortage of those. Joining us right now to discuss this is Harvard Press Professor Stephen Anseloba Hare, Director of the Center for American Political Studies. And I want to thank you first for coming in tonight on this Friday. <laughs> what did you make of what happened today? Uh, it's a fascinating week. The whole week was up and down. Yeah. Leading into this, it looked like he was going to sail through, no problem. And the votes wouldn't have any electoral effects People who were on one side or the other um, were sort of equally balanced in the polling data, but right now we don't know where this is headed. This has sent shockwaves through. Uh, there are so many theories about why Jeff Flake did what he did. He has been a never Trump Republican within the Senate. Why do you think he did this? Well, he's not up for re-election, so right. um, uh, I think Flake has his own standards. I think he pushes back against the president. Um, I think he wanted to send it forward to. To, to send it to the floor right. so that the whole Senate could hear this, but he also wanted her side to be heard, and the best way to do that was to have a full investigation by the FBI. If at the end of this week-long investigation, nothing new is uncovered, and you essentially have the accusers on one side and Brett Kavanaugh on the other, what happens? That's very difficult. It's going to depend on a small number of senators. Um, how will especially Senator Collins and Senator Murkowski decide? We are swapping out your microphone, having some issues with it, but you can keep talking. <laughs> so the real questions are how will a few pivotal senators decide. Um, uh, the, the Senate split 49 to 50, so one Senate vote one way or the other decides the outcome. A lot of people watching Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski. Yep. Um, if, again, if the FBI doesn't turn anything up new, there are red state Democrats who are up for re-election. They are undecided. Joe Manchin and Heidi Heitkamp, some of the other red state Democrats have said they are going to vote against him, but these two are still undecided. What's the risk for them if they vote against Kavanaugh? Uh, before the controversy about his nomination, and it, it looked like Heitkamp was in a really tough spot because... Right. Uh, Manchin's a little safer than Heitkamp. But He's been Heitkamp's polling well. Like 50, the North Dakota race is 50-50, and it looked like she was going to have to cut, cast a d difficult vote one way or the other. She was going to anger her base or turn off more relatively conservative uh, independents in North Dakota. Now the dynamics changed, and we don't know quite how things are going to shake out in North Dakota, but the pressure's off of her now, I think. Uh, Politically, does this give members of the GOP a chance to go home and read the tea leaves and see what their constituents are saying about this process? Mm. That's what they're going to have to do, and it's much more difficult for the GOP now than it was last week. They really have to move very carefully and make sure that they're making the right maneuver. And it's not only for this process right now, but it's also for the court going forward. If they make a mistake now, this could have long-term effects on the court and long-term effects on their standing. For Republicans, they've been struggling in the polling with women in particular ahead of the midterms. Is that why it's particularly risky for them to theoretically confirm Brett Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court? Um, yes, but also just over the long term, if they continue to lose women, it's going to become more and more difficult. In terms of who votes, women are 53% of the electorate. Mm -hmm. They're the majority of the people who actually vote. So it's really important um, for the Republicans not to lose more ground. There's been a gender gap for a very long time where women tend to vote more for Democrats than, than men do. And if that continues to widen, it'll become a bigger and bigger problem for the GOP. Last question. As someone who studies polling and the behavior of voters, is what's happening in Washington now, do you believe, further eroding the faith of the American people in the system and the ability to actually get something done? Um, well, this is a case where they're actually vetting things. And if they, if they push it through too quickly, then that erodes the confidence. So in some sense, what Jeff Flake has done has restored a little bit of faith, potentially? Delaying things, listening to the FBI, hearing it out, 
is is going to make things uh, calmer and also restore some of the confidence people well, have, may have lost. It's going to be another very interesting, dramatic week. We'll, we'll see where things go. Stephen and Salah Baher from Harvard, thank you so much for joining us, talking with us. Thank about you this. for having Great me. Great to have you here.